Hi, everyone. I uh, just want to do a quick review of what we talked about last week with the cause of World War One. It'll be real quick. And then today we're going to look at how this war became a world war, or as it was known then, the Great War. How did so many countries get involved in such a short amount of time? So those big causes we talked about were nationalism, imperialism, military, militarism, and alliances. Uh, these things set up, set the situation for what could be a huge war. And you had the Germans trying to increase their territory and power, the Russians trying to have influence in the Balkans. You had countries all over trying to influence the other places with imperialism as well. And Africa was a huge place, as you saw last week with the Belgians and the Congo. And Britain had a lot of territories in Africa as well. But there's also some imperialism in Europe, and this is probably going to be more towards leading to World War I. There were some issues in Northern Africa, but the place that's going to really be the bed of contention is, are the Balkans. The Balkans are the area around Greece uh, on the Balkan Peninsula. And so Russia and Austria Hungary were looking for competing for land there. And then uh, France had the place called Alsace Lorraine. They wanted to reclaim in Germany. Germany wanted to expand to the east, which was used to be Poland, but Poland didn't exist because uh, Catherine the Great had, take, had pretty much take, taken it into Russia. So you can see the, uh, the map of imperialism in Africa. This is what the map's going to look like when the war starts. Militarism, as you heard last week, every country had a reason to think that they were the most powerful, and they all had huge standing armies. And if you're going to have that big army, why not use it? And so, and you can see everybody thought they were invincible, from Russia with their big army to the Germans with the best trained army. And then Great Britain lived on an island and had the strongest navy, so they were felt very confident as well. They were even prepping for war. Germany had the Schlieffen Plan uh, to fight Russia and France at the same time, should they need to. You had these alliances where countries felt strong because they had other people have the, having their back. Say the Triple Alliance of Austria, Hungary, Germany, and Italy, and the Triple Entente of France, Russia, and Great Britain. So you also spent a lot of time talking about the spark that ignited World War One. You watched the video on that as well. So I'll spend a little bit of time, less time on that. Uh, it was a group of young men that are going to change the course of history. Seven men, the oldest was 27, the youngest was 17. And the situation that was going on in Europe was ignited by these men who were part of a group called the Black Hand, which were Serbian nationalists. The person who actually pulled off the assassination was a guy named Princip, Gavrilo Princip, and he was either 19 or 20. Uh, some people records said he was 20. Uh, he proved in court that he was 19 because if you were 20, you could get the death penalty. If you were under 20, you didn't get the death penalty at that time. So in uh, Turkey was a country that did end up arresting him. Um, and it was bungled by all the stories. There were seven assassins. Uh, the first one, the let the car go right by. The second one had a bomb. It was a percussion bomb, so he hit it on the lamppost, threw it at the Archduke's car. Different stories about what happened. Some people say that the Archduke put up his arm and it bounced off of his arm. Others say that the driver saw it in the in midair and sped up, so the bomb went off the back of the car. At any rate, it exploded in the car, under the car behind the Archduke's car in this parade. And lots of bungles went into this. The Archduke had been warned that there may be attempts on his life. They published the, the parade route in the newspaper so everybody knew where it was going to be. That helped the assassin set up along the route. But anyway, once this assassin uh, threw the bomb, he took a cyanide pill, which they all had because they didn't want to be tortured and had the plot found out about who was, who was behind it. So he took the cyanide pill and he jumped off the bridge for good measure into the river. And he didn't plan very well. The cyanide pill was old and just made him sick. And the river was only about six inches deep. So 
he jumped off, broke both of his ankles, and was throwing up all over himself when a crowd got to him and beat him pretty badly. Uh, the Archduke went on to the, to the rest of the parade, met up with the mayor at City Hall and yelled at him, said, you know, I come to your city and people are throwing bombs at me. Uh, the mayor didn't know what to say. He kind of went through his prepared remarks. The Archduke wanted to go visit people who were in the car with, that got hit by the bomb in the hospital, and his driver made a wrong turn. And Friendship, who thought the assassination attempt was bungled when the Archduke's car took off fast after the first bomb attempt, uh, was kind of bummed, and he was in Schiller's sandwich shop and got something to eat, walked out, and there was the Archduke's car she stopped right in front of him. He picked up his pistol and shot twice, uh, wounding and then killing both the Archduke and his wife, Sophie. So this is going to be it was a big deal. The Archduke was the heir to the throne of Austria. So Austria is going to be very upset with this, and they blame the Serbian government for the assassination uh, because of this group, the Black Hand, had were, were Serbians. Uh, the Serbian government denied it. But Austria went to their ally, Germany, and said, hey, will you back us up if we go to war with Austria? And Germany said, sure, we will help you. And this is called, some people say they, they wrote a blank check. Germany said no matter what Austria does, they would back them. And without this, Austria's terms to Serbia may not have been so brutal uh, in order to avoid war. Austria wasn't interested in avoiding war, though, at this point. The terms had them were super strict. Uh, and then they also were so much so even they wanted to control the legal system of Serbia. And that was one thing that they couldn't accept. They accepted all the monetary terms uh, and very severe terms by the, the Austrians. Uh, but they didn't accept that their legal system would be run by Austria. And they thought that they could avoid war. And... Austria declared war on Serbia, and that was the, the first declaration of war of World War I. So Russia, who has that pan-Slavic movement going on, they want to protect the Serbians because they're Slavs. And when they do that, when they move, start to mobilize their army, mobilization was kind of an act of war. Uh, Russia was a huge country, so it takes months to get their military together, to get it to move to go to war and so as soon as they started to mobilize the germans put the schlieffen plan in action they declared war on russia and france uh, the idea was to defeat france quickly before russia could get mobilized and then to turn and face russia with all their might rather than, than fighting a war on two fronts but the schlieffen plan involved going through belgium to surprise france and attacking in a different spot because of the Alsace-Lorraine dispute between Germany and France. The Germans knew that the French would want to take that land back as soon as possible, and that would be the first place where they would concentrate their war efforts. So the Germans wanted to come through Belgium and get around behind the French and then have them encircled and take Paris. But when they went through Belgium, at this point, the other ally in this in the Triple Entente, Great Britain, wanted to stay out of the war. But when Germany invaded Bel Belgium, who was neutral on the way, Great Britain had guaranteed their independence. And so Great Britain comes in and declares the war, declares war on Germany as well. So this war has gone from a, an assassination attempt to involving Russia, France, Germany, Great Britain, Belgium, Austria-Hungary, and Serbia all within a couple of weeks. So the two sides, once the war starts, become known as the Allies and the Central Powers. The Allies are France, Russia, and Great Britain in the beginning. Eventually, many, many other countries join the Allies. Pretty quickly, uh, Canada and Australia do because they were still technically British countries. Uh, or at least uh, they were still very tightly connected to them. The Central Powers 
were Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. And they're called the Central Powers because when you look at a map of Europe and you go right down the middle, they are it's the central. It's the center of Europe, and that's where these countries are located. Um, you notice somebody that's missing. Right? The country of Italy is not in the Central Powers. They were in their alliance before this started, but pretty quickly, once war broke out, Italy decided that they didn't want to be involved and they didn't want to be on the power, side of the Central Powers. They eventually actually switch over to the Allies on the promise that they will get some land from Austria-Hungary when it's all over. Okay, so 1914, this is when the war starts. Uh, there's many different fronts. It's in Serbia when Austria-Hungary attacked. Northern Africa is, is where some of the battles happened too, with those imperialistic nations down there. And there's the Eastern Front, which is Russia, and the Western Front, front which is France. So this is, uh, Germany tried to use the Fleischen plan, Schlieffen plan uh, to defeat France. This is a map of what that looked like. Okay, so that's the situation as the war begins in the early part of the war. Pretty soon it's going to bog down into a new type of warfare, which I'm going to talk about in the next video. And here you can see the central powers down the middle as things were divided up once the war started. Central powers here, the purple are countries that are part of the Allies. You can see France, Great Britain, Russia, and then Italy joins later. Serbia by default, because they got attacked, and then Greece, 